let's turn all the things up a bit. How's that? A bit better? Right, times are going on. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to share my screen. So this is my... Hi, Paul. This is my DAW of choice. It's Ableton. Mr. G Wiz, hello. Um, I've got a template which I downloaded from Spitfire Audio's site, which includes... Oh, oh Mr. Giles, good evening. SWG in the house. Right, um, let's move on. I've downloaded a basic template from Spitfire Audio, which includes all the synthesizer-y BBC Symphony Orchestra bits for the Discover package. So I've got an entire Symphony Orchestra at my disposal, but I always thought a track with the drums, so I've got a track with Superior Drummer. At the moment, uh, I've literally just loaded it. I've got a swing four count in. Uh, but I'm going to go to my current favourite drum kit of choice, which is in the Metal Foundry. And it is, of course, Mr. Devon Townsend's dev kit. So, loads of toms, all the cymbals, uh, and a nice flat snare. So, yeah, question, what is the door? The door is Ableton Live 10. Uh, the drum package that I'm using here is Toon Tracks Superior Drummer 3, which I've been using for about a year or so now. Um, I've, it works with all the Easy Drummer packages and MIDI files and drum kits. So I've got all my old Easy Drummer EDXs in here as well, but the Metal Foundry is a superior drummer sdx and it's rather nifty so i've got that sorted out i've got a drum kit um what i was gonna do because it's head first only is we'll go for something a little bit kind of proggy so I thought we'd, I've got the BPM set to 134. I've got bored with 120 BPM, which tends to be the default for every DAW. And maybe it's the inordinate amounts of coffee that I drink these days, but I seem to sort of settle around the 135, 140 BPM. Januarius says 148 BPM. I've not broken 200 this year. That'll have to happen. So, all right, we've got... Um, a groove here that's recorded by Brody Simpson. It's recorded at 140 BPM, so I'm playing it slightly slowly. Uh, and we'll just go with the verse, which is this. Everybody hearing that okay? Now that I've finally got Ableton talking to my stream. Riaco Music, good evening. Sounds good. Excellent. That's what I like to hear rather than recording the a cappella version of Six Decades that I performed earlier this afternoon, but we won't talk about that. Right. So, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to drop, I don't want to change the tempo or the time signature. I'm just going to drop that verse drum pattern in as a placeholder for the moment. Um, we're not gonna we're not gonna end up with a song longer than five minutes in an hour, are we? Andy Getch, good evening. So the gang's all here. This is lovely. Right, so I now have five minutes of drum track. How are we doing? That took five minutes. Okay, let's pick up the pace a bit. What am I gonna do? I am gonna start because as you've noticed. I'm wearing a brace on my elbow. Um, I very foolishly played the nine string earlier and I'm regretting it now. Nancy, good evening. Duck Tech Guy, good evening. Hey, this is great. I think this is the... I'm in double figures in, in Twitch. This is wonderful. Uh, yeah, I've got a brace on the arm because I think I've either sprained it or got tennis elbow. So... I'm probably going to be fairly synth-centric synth tonight, if that's a thing. 
Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay down a basic, yeah, a basic bass line uh, using a synth. And because I like it, I'm going to go to my favourite, which is Arturia's Analog Lab, which is a collection of all the synths from their V collection. Uh, there's about 6,000 odd 6,000 odd presets in it, which, yeah, you've got 6,500 presets included. And that's before you start fiddling with things. So I want a bass line. Uh, what do I sort of want? I want a bass. But I think we might also do a bass and a sequence. Can I collect? Yes, I can. There we go. So uh, what I'm also going to show you, if I go back to the main... No, not that one. There we go. This is going to get hideously complicated, but now you're seeing what I'm doing. You're seeing what my Zoom is doing, and you're kind of seeing, in fact, what I can do. Why don't I edit that? So it's more visible. Does that look better? You can see more of it anyway. Okay. Amanda says I'm having hardware. Every yeah, I, I will uh, hopefully get to, uh, to flash some of the hardware a bit later on. But, right, let's find a decent bass line. So... It's a bit ACD, isn't it? And I do love the ARP. 2600 and we're push for time so i'm going to say yep that will do for the base so i uh, don't know if you saw me what i've done i've just switched this to octave down so it's now playing lower notes and that sounds very silly uh what key are we going to put it in let's let's do b flat minor because we can so you can see there uh, i'm literally the push is only showing me notes that are in the B-flat minor scale. I can't play out of the scale. So the blue notes are the Bs, and if I go up, it wraps. So that is an octave below that. So that's a bit unmanageable, isn't it? It's doing too much. All right, let's find another slightly less bonkers sequence. So what have we got here? they're all a bit and that's just that's just a bass isn't it the boucle easel is is absolutely no good for anything other than silly noises swan lake yeah right i can use that what I'm going to do is I'm going to modify it. How am I going to modify it? I want the resonance down. So, cut off frequency. That'll do, I think. So this is Paul Dragon Dreams goes that one. Yeah, <laughs> I think we're on. Okay, so I'm in B flat minor, so I can basically let's save time, and because I'm a creature of habit, we'll we'll just put down something with a one four five blues progression. So uh, what I'm going to do, and that should sync to the drums if I've done this right. So let's just try recording a bass line.
Chorus. Now, the thing is, because it's MIDI information, uh, I don't need to faff about. Control E slices this up into bits. So I've got my intro there, which I can use as a spacer, and I'm slicing and dicing. Um, not too sure about that opening chord on the on the chorus so let's let's go back to the piano roll and turn on the feedback so what have we got so it's those three notes so what if i change that to those that sounds better doesn't it whoops so let's change the C down to an A sharp. Right, okay. I was a bit off on the velocity on this, so what I'm going to do is just select everything and we'll have the velocity. I always do that. I'll just max out the uh, velocity. Okay, while I'm doing this, why don't you guys come up with a title for me or a lyrical subject? Because uh, then I can start thinking about what I'm going to do with the vocals. Right, so there's oh, the other thing that I love doing in Ableton, which helps me no end when I'm editing, is I use markers so or locators. So there's the intro. There's me verse. Oops. There's me chorus. And there's me break. And I can't spell finger trouble. Okay, so we've got our basic bits. So what I can now do is we'll have, after the break, which is, should be there, we'll have another verse. So that's that. So hold down control and just drag it. And then we'll control and drag that. So I've got another chorus. And we'll have another one of those little breaks to give everybody a breather. Whoops. So there's another break. And then we'll have the middle eight. So we'll have the bridge there. Rat liquor eating cake on a golden meteorite watching falling rainbows. I think I think we probably spend more time finding lyrical content for that. That would just take me down the rabbit hole. It really would, Andy. It's great, but uh, I think Amanda's push my button works for me. So we need a bridge. What am I going to do on the bridge? I'm going to use a different patch. I am going to leave one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's leave eight bars because, after all, it's the middle eight. Then we'll have another break. Then we'll have another verse. In fact, no, let's, let's, we'll have another chorus just in case you'd forgotten what the chorus sounds like. Because I'm a rebel. Play, diff, play with people's expectations. Defy them. Add locator. Then we'll have a verse. Which goes there. Uh, then we'll have another chorus. Uh, which 
which goes, where's that? That's there. And then we'll have a play out, which I like. So we can be lazy and just do a fade, or I can have a grand finale. And again, I'll just give that a couple of repeats, three repeats of the drum pattern, which takes us to three minutes 50, which is about about right it's a bit long for a single right now i've got my structure we can go back to superior drummer and we'll go back to the progressive thing and we'll see what we've got for the different sections which i can reserve the rights to to change so that break is basically a pre-chorus but it's actually going to be in front of the verse because i'm a rebel so what's that sound like Duct tape, you, duct tape guy, you have got it. I am the Bob Ross of prog metal. Um, I will quite happily take that laurel. That 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 suits me fine. And yeah, I mean, I always pants stuff. That's that's what I do. So, oh look, the breaks twice as uh, half as long as that drum patch. So I'm going to want the second half, not the first half. Uh, and then I can just stretch the old patch in over it. Uh, let's, let's pick that one. What's that? Oh, yeah, we're getting into heavy double kick drum action here. So we're going to do that one before the bridge. So again, it's going to be twice as long, isn't it? Yes, of course it is. Uh, so we'll put that there. Okay chorus what's the chorus sound like crash cymbals the first guy who i ever heard with a crash cymbal was filthy animal taylor from motorhead um and he had one on the chase is better than the catch which is a track on i think it's overkill and i'd never heard anything like it i mean apart from anything else phil basically invented thrash metal drumming with the double double kick drums and double bass drums but it was the crash cymbal that absolutely blew me away and it was like what is that why does it sound so different um and the china crash is it well if i play this you should be able to hear it doesn't stand out probably because the dev kit probably doesn't have a, chi a China crash on it. It doesn't look like it. What's that? That's a stage crash. Yeah, he hasn't got one, has he? So what we can do is we can... No, let's, let's not go down this rabbit hole. Let's... <laughs> Otherwise... But the, the China crash is basically a very, very strange, strange noise. But, okay, so I'm going to pick for the bridge. We'll have that one because it's nice and shouty. And that's eight bars, so that should just drop in nicely. There we go. Right, so the other thing I was going to do, we'll have another one of the crash crashes for the later chorus. So that's there and i'm just going to copy that and make whoops control z is your friend we're gonna put that there as well whoops you will hear me say whoops an awful lot tonight and then pre-chorus will play out on the pre-chorus because we want something nice and raucous at the end to go off into the fade and uh, they're all pretty much the same intensity so there's no point in dropping different ones into ramp up as it fades out okay so we've now got the basic structure of a song and i've got a synth so what does it sound like so far let's listen to it <laughs> Thank you. 
might even take that resonance on the synth down even more. Right, that's got it to the floor. Okay, you are going to love this, Arthur, because this is going to get silly. Okay, so we've got a we've got a workable bass line. So now I'm going to use a pad that I'm going to go over the top of that, and we'll call in the old standard. We'll use the the Mellotron. So the Mellotron, basically, if you've not heard of the Mellotron, it's a 1960s influence or instrument that was used by the Beatles. It's called, this patch is called Strawberry Flutes because it's the, what was used for Strawberry Fields. Um, so it's limited range because the way it works is that each note has about a two foot loop of eight, in, eight inch magnetic tape and a playhead. And when you press the key, it plays the loop and it loops and you can usually hear the seam on the loop. And because it's a Mellotron and Arturia are notorious for emulating everything, if you want to make the tape speed flutter... because your tape head's sticky. It'll wobble, but we don't want that. Okay, so rather than the Beatles, what I'm going to use is the strings. And the strings, again, use... I mean, you can see all these presets of basically Tangerine Dream numbers. Uh, what I want is the strings. So what have we got? Where's this? There we go. Chamber strings. That's like Starless and Bible Black, so that's probably a bit quiet. I want the shouty strings. Are those? Are you the shouty strings? You are the shouty strings. So it's instant King Crimson. So, uh, yeah, that's what we'll have. So what have we got? How can we play this with our bass? That'll work, won't it? What I love about Ableton Live 10, and this is magic, is I just played something, but I didn't have record pressed. And it was like, bugger. If only there was a way to just go create capture MIDI and it's captured what I just played. So now I've got that intro. How cool is that? So um, let's just tidy up that because it's all over the place. Uh, again, we're going to rack up the velocity. Uh, that doesn't need to be there. That can go to the end. You notice I'm not using quantize. I can use quantize, but... I quite like the sort of the humanness of it not quite being gone. Um, so I'm just going to leave that at the moment, although that's a bit rubbish. So what's that sound like? Yeah, I like that. So 
after the bridge, we can repeat that. Whoops. Hold down control. Oh, I can just drag that to after the bridge. So there's me intro. So what are we going to... I think we need to go lower for the verse. Which, of course, I can't because the Mellotron doesn't do lower. So let's just play the, the basic notes. So let's do that again. And again, that can be duplicated because we haven't really got time for me to do a separate separate performance for every single version. So that will go there as well. Don't need the, the break there, so that can go. And then I just need to drop in. So pin, punch in and out on Ableton is also stupidly easy and it's to do with this little chappy here so if I just spread that out so I want to come in at the beginning of this chorus and I want to finish recording at the end of that chorus so th this basically sets my punch in brackets so let's record this bit <laughs> Jobs are good. Right, I think it's about time we saved this, don't you? So we're going to call this. Push my button, aren't we? So this will be song number 24. How are we doing for time? Half an hour. Right, we've got to pick up the pace. So um, let's have some strings. And because I love cellis, this is all going to be about the bottom end. Uh, so what I'm going to do, so I'm now moving into BBC Symphony Orchestra Discover package, which is a free VST. So it'll work in any door that will use your... Um, VST plugins, you download the Spitfire Audio app. If you go to the Spitfire Audio website and fill in their questionnaire, then two weeks later, the Spitfire Audio app will let you install this, which is a complete symphony orchestra. So you've got horns, you've got violins, two sets of violins, set of violas, set of celli, set of basses, whole bunch of horn brass sections a whole bunch of woodwinds and uh i mean it's worth it just for the gong sample let's be honest here so um i'm a huge celli fan you get four different types of noise with the celli and you've got dynamics and expression and reverb for it so you've got a whole bunch of parameters to control so what do you get when you just push a button on the cello 
No, that's still the Mellotron. So let's arm the right track and try again. So I tend to use the legato, but the spiccato is nice, which you might double it because you get a shorter, shorter instance of the of the note. Uh, and pizzicato. And I think we'll probably stick with the pizzicato because it'll work well against the tr the Mellotron's trem uh, strings. But there's also tremolo. Instant Vivaldi. Right, okay, so we're going to go with the pizzicato. Oh, uh, yes, the pizzicato cellos. So let's fold some of these out of the way while we're not using them. So, right. I, you, I mean, despite the fact I've got markers, I do like having visual cues in all this. So here we go. What have we got? I'm going to just play it through so I've got some idea of what I'm looking for. Yeah, instant Vivaldi can be that can be my 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 catchphrase, right? I think I'm good enough to go with something here. So let's turn off the punch in and punch out because otherwise I won't get anything recorded until we get to the third chorus, and let's give it a go. convinced. Let's just turn it up and see how it works. kind of work. The only one that I don't like is that. That's better. Right, this is all over the place, so I am going to quantize this. So select everything, 
Um, I normally tend to be quite loose with quantization, but this time, yeah, actually, 16th, start and end, and I'm going to be absolutely on the grid. So see how much those jump by. Yeah, not a lot. Okay, that'll do. So I've got my cellos. I've got my cellos for my verses and the choruses. So let's slice and dice again. So another verse, another chorus, another chorus, another chorus. Right. And I said it's all about the, the bottom end, so let's go for the basses. So the basses on this are glorious. Just listen to this. Oh. Right. Um they're not gonna come they're not gonna be in the first verse. So let's put them in the second verse. Can't hear what I'm doing. So let's turn the synth submix down. Let's turn the cellos down because they were at six. And yeah, that should do us. Let's let's try that again. So, uh, yeah, somebody was saying Chris has pianist's fingers. I, I don't really, although, yeah, piano was what I learnt first. Uh, and I was a keyboard player in a band that never really got anywhere in the 80s. Uh, but our singer, who is a gent by the name of Rick Blacksill, ended up being the producer of a... British television programme called Top of the Pops that some of you may have heard of. Um, absolutely barking mad. Lovely guy. Uh, really interesting lyricist as well. Uh, no, that doesn't go there. That goes like that, doesn't it? Yes, that's right. OK, and then copy that to the bottom. Right, time's going, so I'm not going to bother with violins and stuff, but we are going to definitely need some bass, some some brass to get things moving. So what have we got? Uh, you notice on this as well, I've, um, I've been playing everything on the push, which is as much of a surprise to you as it is to me because I've got all these synthesizers behind me and uh, I've not been using them. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to switch for recording the horns. I'm going to switch to the other camera and I'm going to 
record something using the Korg M3 as a MIDI controller, which is a shameful waste of money for something that has basically all of this stuff built into it, but uh, needs must. So there's me, there's my keyboard rack. So let's... Uh, I'm going to set Ableton. In fact, the way I'll do it... I'm going to set Ableton so that my counting is four bars rather than two bars and I'm going to enable the horn or arm the horn section so right so what we've got if I play the the keyboard it sounds like this Right, I'm just going to play this run through so I've got a basic feel for what I'm doing. Uh, let's rewind. Let's try that again. Don't need the click track on. Thank you very much. Let's try that again. kind of thing will do on it so again we'll just leave the cellos for the first verse but what i'm going to do with the horns is i'm going to drop them in so that they start appearing during the chorus so here we go says those long chords i just love french horns uh, there is something about i mean you guys are probably too young to remember there was um an english chamber music music hall double act called donald flanders and michael swan and they had a song called ill wind which was based on i've forgotten but it, it's Michael uh, Donald Flanders singing and Michael Swan playing the piano and the lyrics go something along the lines of I once had a horn and I learnt how to play it I once on a whim da, da, da. oh god I can't remember it 
Um, this is, I've heart, I've lost my horn. To play that horn, I had to improve my embouchure. I found that horn was a bit of a devil to play. Uh, yeah, great. Look, look up Ill Wind by Flanders and Swan. It's absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, Amanda, it wasn't I listened to a different music. It was I was forced to listen to the music my father liked. That's where it all went wrong. But it's meant I've ended up with the most bizarre collection of musical memories. So everything from uh, Victor Borger, who didn't just advertise Carlsberg Lager on the television. He's actually a very, very funny uh, humorist and... Um, pianist but uh, right what am I doing on this I I'm just gonna time's going on so I've got 10 minutes left so I think what we'll do is I'm just gonna very quickly lay down a bit of guitar because we've got to have guitar and then I'll try and make up some lyrics on the spot so no pressure Chris So I'm going to turn the mic down so I don't record the mic sound through the monitors while I'm recording the track. So bear with me a sec.
So I've got seven minutes left. Let's turn the monitors off. Let's get rid of the really hissy effects pedal on the guitar. <laughs> Reaction music says, time to sing one word repeatedly. Well, we know that the core, we know that the track's called Push My Button, which I must remember to save. Show, sure. push, 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 push my button. Yeah, so. I'm thinking. Um, so again, I have a. subgroup I have a subgroup set up so I've got two tracks for verse vocals and two tr uh, three tracks for chorus so uh, uh, okay I've got a few let's let's try so uh, hang on a second gonna need to turn various bits down aren't I And some of that guitar is horrendous, so we're definitely going to need to go back to something. Other. But uh, we'll do that. I can do that afterwards. So, right. Uh, okay, got an idea for the first verse. This bloody mic mechanics buzzing away like mad, and I can't f can't get into its software when I connect it to the USB because it says that the uh, TC Electronic website's offline, which stops me adjusting my pedals, which is not good enough, TC Electronic. Right. Um, so what I'm thinking for the first verse, and this is going to go in a sort of James Bond direction because it's me and i always go in a james bond direction is something like well let's let's try this my plans are almost okay I'm still got a four count in, haven't I? My plan is now complete. The world lies at my feet. There is just one more transaction. Before I see the action Then What? Switch tracks before you record, Chris. It does help. And why are you trying to arm the submix track? It's this track that you should be working with, not that one. Right, it's, let's go back to my, let's go back. I'm going to let you into my secret weapon, okay? It's called rhymezone.com and needs must. You just type in button and it says what I could use, so Mutton's probably a bit.
Okay, this is going to be very cheesy. but that will have to do. Um, so, oh, Riaco, yeah. So, second chorus. When it comes to control, I got nothing. John Snow. Yes, yeah, you get the idea. I'm. Um, we're out of time, but uh, what I can do, if you're up for it, is just play what we've got at this point, which I will save, and I will come back to this in the morning because it's midnight here for Riaco over in Belgium. It's it's one in the morning. Uh, so let me just turn off, turn back the monitors on. So what's this sound like? Let's let's give it a go. at my feet There is just one more transaction Before I see the action When it comes to power I'm the glutton But you're the person of the hour Just push my button
and insert fantastic guitar solo and layered um, whatever. So uh, with that, yes, as Dragon Dream says, see you guys over at uh, Amanda's place. So now it's Sunday evening. I've had a few hours sleep and I've been back to push my button, which is here. And I've worked on it quite a bit more. I've come up with lyrics, tidied up the takes that I didn't like. Um, actually kept rather more of it than I thought I was going to. Added another quite a few sections. Uh, tidied up the strings. And this is what it sounds like. i 
so that was Push My Button. I had a stupid amount of fun making that, uh, even if I wasn't always sure that I was entirely in control of what was going on. But uh, I reckon that turned out pretty well. I think I've moved beyond grandiosity firmly into pomp rock territory. And to be honest, I'm quite happy with that. Huge fun. Thanks for tuning in and watching with me, taking part in the chat. Tonight, I'm going to be writing another song live, but this time I'm having all my toys taken away. I'm literally going to produce something with a microphone, and it won't even be this super-duper one. An acoustic instrument and a copy of Audacity. So that's going to be a challenge. So hopefully I'll see you when that takes place tonight. Until then, cheers and thanks for watching. <laughs>